How many of us come to know when the mind gets disturbed? Because some of us don't come to know when it's disturbed. How many of us are aware when this gets disturbed? Aware when it gets disturbed? Can feel the disturbance? Yeah. When does it get disturbed? And how do you feel that disturbance? What happens? Let, let's see how do you feel the disturbance and then let's go back and see what is the cause of my disturbance. How do you come to know it's disturbed? How do I come to know it's disturbed? I cannot concentrate. Very good. Anything else? When I get pained inside, yeah. Something goes unplanned is the situation. How do I come to know it's disturbed? What do I feel? When you're irritated, irritation will come in your behavior. You know? Many times we are able to see the illness when it comes out in the behavior. That's a much later stage. If I check it when it's at the level of my thoughts, it will not come out in my behavior. But because I did not check it when it was at the level of thoughts, I will be able to see it only when it comes in the level of words and sometimes in the level of behavior, body language. Irritated because of things not happening according to my way. So irritation is when I'm disturbed. Lack of concentration is when I come to know my mind is not focusing on one thing. Anything else? Anxiety. So what do you feel at that time? Hmm? My heartbeat increases is much, much, much later. Heartbeat increases means now the disturbance is not in the mind. Now the disturbance has reached the body. Anxiety because of? Anxiety because of? Fear. Fear of? Fear of failure. Before having failed. So we start anticipating whether I will pass or I will fail, whether I will... Anybody experiences fear? Fear? Fear. What if someone sitting next to you experiences fear and says, uh, let's say, I say to you, what if I fall? I have this fear, what if I fall off this sofa right now? Then what will you do? And I will keep saying to you, what if I fall? What if I fall? What if I fall? Then what are you going to do? You're my family and friend. I'm going to start saying now, suppose I fall off this sofa. Suppose the leg of this sofa breaks. Suppose this tilts. Suppose I fall off the stage. There is a possibility, no? I can fall. Is there a possibility that I can fall? Yes. So I'm going to start thinking. And then I'm not going to start thinking. I'm also going to start talking. Suppose I fall. Suppose I fall. What are you going to do? Kya karenge? There is no reason. <laughs> there is no reason. I can only create a thought. Suppose I fall. What is the reason for it? No reason. Because I know there is a possibility that I can fall. And there is a possibility that each one of you can fall off the chair on which you are sitting. So not only I will create a fear that I may fall. What if my wife falls? What if my husband falls? What if my child falls? Can I create this thought? Is it normal to think that way? Is it normal to think that way? No? 
So then what are you going to do to help me when I think like this? Distract. How do you distract me? How will you distract me? I am creating a thought, what if I fall? What if I fall? What are you going to do? <laughs> he is reassuring me that I am going to fall. <laughs> so sweet. Thank you so much, but this is not positive. <laughs> because what will this do to my fear? Huh? So if I say, what if I fall? And he sweetly says, don't worry, I'll take care of you when you fall. <laughs> so what will happen by saying that you are endorsing? You're endorsing my thought of the possibility of falling. You have to heal me. What will you say? You won't fall. I will say, of course I can fall. Will you give up on me or will you go on talking to me till my thought changes? If you love the other person, you're just going to say to the other person, okay, stop doing what you're doing. Come, let's sit and talk. You know? And then you're going to ask me, kya hua? I said, what if I fall? So you're going to say, why will you fall? So what, what if I fall? Well, the sofa is perfectly fine. Why will you fall? This will go on for some time. I will keep saying, what if I fall? And you will keep saying from there, but why will you fall when everything is fine? Your power, your power of conviction, of faith, and your love for the other person will overpower the fear and heal them. All that we have to do is, when our mind says, what if I fail? Love your own self. Love your own self. And as soon as the mind says, what if I fail? Immediately. Immediately. Why will you fail? The mind will say, but there is a chance that I can fail. Keep on talking to your own mind because there are two thoughts inside. You have to come for this program. The mind can create two thoughts. Should I go? The mind will say, no, today I have another thing to do. Yes. So there will always be a dialogue inside. Make use of that dialogue. Don't allow the fear to stay. Once the mind gets used to saying this, what if I fall, what if I fall, what if I fall, it's going to create that kind of thought. Then it will be, what if I fall? Then while climbing down, it will be, what if I miss the step? Sitting in the car, it will be, what if I meet with an accident? This will become my way of thinking only because when the first time I said, what if I fall, I did not counter it. Who is our best friend? Ourselves. We don't have to go to somebody else and say, okay, be nice to me, say positive things to heal me. Because they might say, of course there is a chance you will fall. They are family and friends. They love us. But what if they also carry a sanskar of fear? And I go to them with my little fear, but probably they have more fear than me. Does that happen sometimes? Yes? Does that happen sometimes? So we have to be very careful to whom we go for healing. And the best person to go for healing. The best person to go for healing so that there's never any dependency or anybody outside. Five minutes, sit back, be with yourself. And if I'm not able to say it to myself inside, write it out. 
write out your thoughts and so write out your thought my mind is saying what if i fail what will happen to my family who will take care of my children write the thought and under the thought write a counter thought and what will happen by doing that gradually i'm teaching my mind the baby within the right way of talking you know when we meet children who don't behave properly what do you say parents have not disciplined the child so from the child's behavior we are seeing the parent capacity and the ability to discipline the child similarly if this child has not been disciplined it keeps jumping up and down inside and keeps talking but this child can be disciplined at any age so one simple relationship let's begin today to teach this child the right way of talking like we teach our children good morning bolo do you teach children say good morning say thank you say please say sorry we teach them thousand times till they learn it similarly we will teach this mind do not allow it to talk a language which is a depleter for myself and a depleter for people around me so what if i fall what if i fail after saying why will i fail now teach it another language success is 100% certain for me you know like children will say i can't go for the exam tomorrow i have not prepared so does the parent say okay don't go give it up nahi na nahi so what will the parent say pakka you are going to do very well tomorrow the child will say no i have not prepared parent will say get up move you are going to do very well tomorrow parenting motivation anything we can do for someone else we can do it for for ourselves so the mind will say what if i fail tell the mind success is certain for you the mind will say but what if i fail success is certain for you what if i fail success is certain for you one out of the two is going to win don't let the right way of thinking give up easily it will win over the wrong way of thinking and that's the only way to be happy always fear is in the air you see fear is in the air why fear is in the air there's a lot happening out in the world how many of us read or watch the world news early in the morning uthalo uthalo whether on tv newspaper phone social media nobody here listens to what's happening in the world early morning <laughs> listening to world news is the easiest way to create a sanskar of fear watching crime based serials is the easiest way to create a sanskar of fear i was with a brother in the flight a few days back and throughout the flight he was watching a crime based serial 2 hours after that we were all in the meeting together and somewhere in the meeting it came up he said i don't remember when i leave home did i switch off the gas did i lock the door so he said do you know what i do it's the first time i've heard this he said after i switch off the gas i take a photo of it 
honestly, I laughed the same way actually when I heard it. And he said, when I switch off the lights, I take a photo of it. And then when I lock the door, I take a photo of it. And then during the day when my mind says, did I lock the door? Then I see the photo and I tell myself, this is truth. This is not a story and it's very recent, just one week back. Too much of... While we are watching and while we are listening, we think it's nothing to do with our life. It's a story. It's fiction. And you tell people, don't consume. They say, don't worry, sister, I know it's a story. They know it's a story. But the quality of the energy of the story is becoming the nutrition of my mind. So whether it's fiction or whether it's what's happening in the world. Reading, watching, listening, terror, pain, violence, other things happening in the world. Keep absorbing. Easiest way to create a sanskar of fear. Want to remove the sanskar of fear? First thing, stop reading, watching, listening. This mind, little baby, what should we feed the baby? What should we feed the baby? Nutrition. Remember the day when you had to sterilize the bottle for the baby? You won't give the baby anything and everything. Please sterilize the information which you're giving this baby. Energy, vibrations around us in the air, energy and vibrations of the information that we are consuming. As it is, there is a lot we will get to know throughout the day. At least take care of the morning nutrition. How many of us can take it up as a one month project? No consuming any fear-based information early in the morning first. Within one month, this mind will be talking another language. Now, replace that, replace that with consuming information of compassion, of faith, of happiness, of love. And then watch the mind talking. We are what we watch, read and listen. We are what we watch, read and listen. Don't watch, read, listen anything what you don't want to become. Whether you're watching something which has relationship issue, even the way the actor on the theater or in the movie is talking, behaving, if they're talking in an angry manner, I'm consuming that. And very soon you'll find yourself talking like that. Do you see sometimes that we start talking like our friends? Do we start talking like our friends sometimes? We pick up their vocabulary, we are using the same words. Little children, they come home and they are talking another language. And we say, where did my child pick this up from now? Just picked it up. We pick up from media. So be very careful, whether it's media, social media. In the name of knowledge about the world, Today people say, oh, I need to know everything that's happening in the world. Pause and check. Why do I need to know everything that's happening in the world? Why? Why? Why do I need to know everything that's happening in the world? Anyway, someone will come and tell me, do you know what happened there? You know, I say, thank you. Thank you for being my newspaper in one line. Without having to watch the visual, Without having to consume the emotion of the people in the scene, I can get the information in one line. 
I only need the information. If I need the information, I don't need to absorb the emotion. A lot of difference between information and emotion. Difference between information and emotion? I can get the same piece of information, such and such a thing happened in this part of the world this morning. One line. And the other thing is repeated visual. Repeated anger, repeated hatred, repeated fear, repeated hurt, repeated crying. Take care of the mind. Take care of the mind. If we don't take care of our nutrition, fear will keep on increasing. And fear will not let us live in happiness. Fear has no logic. Uh, my mind has no logic when it says, what if I fall? Everybody around me will say, but why should I fall? But my mind will create only one thought, what if I fall? What if I fall? Because for the past six months, I've consumed information about people falling. But if for the next 10 days, I consume information of 100% success, I read stories, I read true life cases only about success, success, determination, faith, my mind will not be able to create a thought of failure. Just 10 days. That's all that's needed. So in the name of knowledge of the world, in the name of entertainment, in the name of humor, in the name of time pass. Take care. Emotional detoxification is the need of the hour. Is the need of the hour. What did we do when we came to the Brahma Kumaris? Just one shift, half an hour of the morning, which was earlier being consumed with knowing about what's happening in the world, that half an hour got replaced with spiritual study. Information about self, strength of the self, connecting to God, supreme power, understanding my karma, understanding empathy, understanding compassion. Only 30 minutes in the morning, the mind started talking a different language. The easiest thing to do to change a sanskar, the easiest thing to do to change our way of thinking, change emotional diet.